Instant Ralston and regular Ralston, the hot whole wheat cereals and the red and white checkerboard packages, present Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space, visions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! <laughs> In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy are in the control tower of Prince Baccarati's castle, ready to force the prince to permit a rescue squadron to reach Planet X. Suddenly, apparently from nowhere, Baccarati's assistant, Murdoch, produces a weapon. Commander, Murdoch's got a gun. Drop it, Murdoch. Murdoch, we've got blast cartridges in our hands. If you shoot us, you'll blow up the whole tower. Better hold it, Murdoch. Murdoch. Have you lost your mind? One more step. We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting space football adventure, Rescue from Planet X. Hi, space patrollers. There's lots of excitement here in the main post office at Space Patrol Headquarters. We're swamped with entries in the Name the Planet contest. Uh oh, here comes another batch of mail. Yes, it looks like just about everybody in the universe is trying to win the gigantic Rocket Clubhouse, a 10,000 pound, 35 foot long clubhouse on wheels, with a real full sized motor truck to pull it, and $1,500 cash. At the first prize, some lucky space patroller will win, and maybe it'll be you. Man, oh man, think of all the fun you and your friends can have. And think of living like a real space patroller in a clubhouse with built-in sleeping bunks, electric lights, equipment lockers, and even a cooking stove. But that's not all, gang. In just a few minutes, I'll tell you more about the 1,750 other terrific prizes in the Name the Planet contest. And now, today's space patrol adventure, Rescue from Planet X. Commander Corey and Cadet Happy now have Prince Baccarati and Dr. Malengro in one of Baccarati's own ships and are circling Baccarati's castle on the remote planet X. While Dr. Malengro is in an aft compartment guarded by the giant Granu, native of the polar regions of planet X, Buzz holds a ray gun on Baccarati in the control section of the atmosphere ship. All right, Baccarati, here's where you go to work. What's the frequency of the signal that gets us through the defense field around your castle? I don't remember. Half. Head directly for the castle. Yes, sir. Hurry. Hurry, listen, you can't do that. If the perimeter guns don't get you, the force fields will. Then give me the frequency. All right. It's 508.5 megacycles. 508.5. Check. I hope you're right, Baccarati. I'm not a fool, Corey. I value my own safety. All right, now listen. You're going to contact your master control tower and tell them you're bringing in two prisoners. You're going to get inside your castle without tipping your flunkies off that you're in trouble. Got that? Yes. Yeah. All right, get on the space phone. And don't try to be clever, or maybe the last thing you try. Just say you and Malangro are bringing two prisoners up to the tower. Go ahead and talk. Prince Baccarati and Falcon 29 calling Castle Control Tower. Prince Baccarati to Control Tower. Murdoch in Control Tower. Come in, Your Highness. Uh, Murdoch, I got two prisoners here. I'm, I'm bringing them up to the tower. Want me to assign a guard, Your Highness? Oh, no, no, that won't be necessary. Uh, that's all, Murdoch. That's the idea, Buckley, Your Honor. Just through the force field, sir. Set the ship down near the east gate of the castle. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Hap, get Malengro. We'll leave Granu in the ship to keep him out of mischief. Put him in the galley. Let him help himself. After he stuffs his stomach, he'll, he'll go to sleep. Yeah, that'll do it all right. Now listen, Bacchanati. I'm going to give you and Malengro each a blast gun to hold on happy in me. Yes, Commander. You're wasting that grin. I'm taking out the blast cartridge. Oh. Happy and I'll each be holding one in our hands. If anything happens to make us relax our grip, well, I think you know what'll happen. Of course, Commander. You couldn't move fast enough to escape. I understand. Go on, Malengro. Keep moving. 
Before I give you this empty gun box, Roddy, I want you to help me to explain to Malengo the spot you're both in. I'm sure he'd hate to cause the death of his prince. You needn't worry. I'll explain to you. A few moments later, Buzz and Happy descend from the atmosphere ship, hands raised, and followed closely by Baccarati and Malengo. The four men walk across the castle spaceport to the east gate. At the electrically controlled drawbridge, the captain of the guard steps forward and salutes. Get back! Get back! You're not needed, Captain. Respectfully, the guard steps back. Empty guns in their backs, Buzz and Happy continue down the long hall to Baccarati's tower elevator. Silently, the door slides open and four men step inside. The door is closed. And swiftly, the elevator raises them hundreds of feet to the tower. All right, Baccarati. We can quit this masquerade. Give me that gun. Yes, Commander. But please, uh, remember those glass cartridges in your hand. See that you remember them. Open the door. Go on, Malengo. Congratulations, I saw you from the tower window. Get your hands up. Uh, well, I, I thought... Do as he says, Murdoch. Do as he says. Yes, your hand. Pat, here's a loaded glass gun. Keep it on the three of them. Yes, sir. And Murdoch, don't try anything. We've got an extra cartridge in our hands. If you relax our grip, this whole tower will blow up. He's not fooling, Murdoch. Obey him. Yes, your highness. Baccarati, I want you to cut off all the defenses of Planet X. That means your robot-controlled ships out in space, your meteor control beams, and your surface warning systems. I'm going to order a fleet of space patrol ships to come in and pick up those men you abducted from the United Planets. We're staying with the forest people we just liberated from your Endurian mine. I'm staying right here in this tower until every last man is off of Planet X. I'll cut the defenses. Your ships will get to I promise. Uh, now, uh, those best cartridges in your hand, they're dangerous to uh, to all of us. I know it. But you can't hold them indefinitely. Put on the safety deck. After all, we're, we're helpless now. The quicker you cooperate, the sooner you'll be out of danger. Now, when my ships get here, I'm going to assign some men to see that all your weapons factories are put out of operation. But you have no right to do that. Planet X isn't under the jurisdiction of the United Planets. Yes, but we have a right to protect ourselves from aggression. You've been using your weapons and spaceships to destroy our installations, wreck our ships, and rob and abduct our peaceful citizens. You're a menace to every planet in the solar system. But you're leaving us defenseless. Who do you have to defend yourself against? Surely not the natives. They certainly have cause to hate you, but they're primitive people. Not all of them. One group is very intelligent. They're the Lumens. Come out! Wait a minute. Who are the Lumens? Come on, speak up. Are there, uh... Uh, they're a race that uh, lived a thousand miles from here in Golden Valley. You're in danger from them? Have they tried to attack you? Well, not yet. Uh, in fact, I didn't fear the Lumens at all. No, not in the least. Murdoch, why did you mention them? Uh, uh, no special reason. It's just that they're supposed to have special powers. Ah, superstition. They're a little smarter than the savages around them, so these wild, impossible stories get started. Well, I don't intend to interfere with any of the native tribes. When I mean, you and your ringleaders are put away, so you can't cause any trouble, the people of Planet X can go back to working out their own problems. All right, Baccarati, get to that control panel and cut those defenses. Hurry. All right, come on. Hey, they're all off, Commander. Your ships can come in now in perfect place. Commander, I... All right, Malengro, hold still. Commander, the men will be getting suspicious. It's past the time when they receive their special orders. That's right, Commander. If they think His Highness is in trouble, they may break in here and... Uh, they should attack you with those glass cartridges in your hand. That's the point. Can you handle it, Murdoch? Good. But if His Highness were to appear personally... That's I'm... out. Perhaps if I appeared as second in command to His Highness, the castle staff would be reassured. They're both anxious to get out of here, aren't they? All right, go ahead. But remember, I've got Baccarati here. If you want to keep him healthy, don't try anything. Yes, sir. Of course, Commander. Happy, watch Baccarati. I'm going to space upon Robbie to send a squadron to Planet X. Out across the vastness of space, the voice of Commander Corey informs Security Chief Major Robertson 
that Space Patrol ships may now land on Planet X in complete safety. Meantime, Baccarati's two assistants, Dr. Malengro and Murdoch, draw relieved breath of being outside the tower room. Dr. Malengro, if you don't think of something quick, you'll be on our way to a criminal rehabilitation center. I'm quite aware of our predicament, Mr. Murdoch. Perhaps if we were to return to the tower room with the paralyzer ray gun. That's it. Get Corey and the cadet before they have a chance to throw those glass cartridges. Forget it. If the paralyzer ray would freeze their hands tightly shut. They, they couldn't really. I said forget it. You would be endangering the life of his highness. But if we succeeded, we would be heroes. See here, Murdoch. Since I've been away, you've taken a lot upon yourself. Remember, I'm Prince Bakarati's chief advisor, not you. Of course. Dr. I, I advise to... you to keep your mouth closed unless His Highness asks for your advice. That remark about the lumens, for example, that was stupid, Murdoch. Very stupid. I was only trying to help. We can convince Corey that those who remain on Planet X have need of weapons. Why, perhaps in the future we could secretly build up our forces again and rescue His Highness. The idiot. If Corey learns that there is really an intelligent race here, it will pave the way to Planet X joining the United Planets. Then what chance will we have? Uh, there is something in what you say, Dr. Malanga. Uh, we must get word to His Majesty's subjects never to mention the lumens. And Murdoch, forget that melodramatic idea of using a paralyzer on Corey. Oh, of course, Doctor. I've put it completely out of my That's right, Robbie. I'll contact the squadron when they reach Planet X and direct them where to pick up our men. Hurry out. Boy, was Major Robertson ever tickled to hear that we were all right? Well, it was good to hear his voice again, too. Well, with Robbie dispatching the squadron of ships from Pluto, we won't have to wait too long. It'll still be several hours, though. That's a long time to have to sit and look at Baccarati. Somebody's in the elevator. I see Malingro and Murdoch. Keep an eye on that door, Hat. Yes, sir. Just Murdoch. Where's Malingro? We'll be here in a few moments, Commander. As soon as I finish with this... Commander! Why not, you fool! I got them, Your Highness. I got them both. You idiot! They have those blaster cartridges in their hands. Get out of here before they blow up the tower! Your Highness, please. May I point out how rigidly they're lying there? Their hands are still clenched. They can't move. Oh, yes, yes. You're right. Good work, Murdoch. I'll have two guards remove the blast cartridges from their hands. Uh, out of my presence, of course. Of course, Your Highness. Her Cory. Cory, you can still see and hear, can't you? Even though you can't move. In a few hours, your space patrol ships will be close to Planet X. You will have the pleasure of seeing them destroyed. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. The watch, ticking off the seconds, the minutes, the hours. The watch that helps Commander Corey stand guard over the United Planets. Yes, space patrollers, you can have a wristwatch just like Commander Corey. It's shock resistant with a sweep second hand. And it's just one of the 1,000 third prizes in the amazing Name the Planet contest. Now, just listen. <laughs> Two hundred fifty space patrol wristwatches, two hundred fifty autosonic space rifles, two hundred fifty outer space helmets, and two hundred fifty swell space patrol emergency kits. But how about second prize? Well, would you believe it? Second prize group is seven hundred fifty twin varsity bicycles. Twin, the sharp-looking sports-style bike, mighty light, mighty fast, with three-speed gear shift, two-wheel handbrakes, and all the other features that make Schwinn America's greatest bicycle. But better get started, gang. Start thinking up names for Planet X so you can win the huge Rocket Clubhouse or one of the 1,750 second and third prizes in the Name the Planet contest. And now, back to our Space Patrol adventure, Rescue from Planet X. The ambitious Murdoch, desperately eager to place himself higher in the good graces of Prince Baccarati, succeeded in a daring stroke to free the prince from Commander Corey and Cadet Happy. Suddenly producing a paralyzer ray gun in the tower room, Murdoch prevented Buzz and Happy from releasing the powerful explosive blast gun cartridges they held in their hands. 
Now locked in a dark and musty chamber near the tower, Buzz and Happy are just recovering from the effects of the paralyzer ray. Let's feel our way around this room, see if we can find a way out. I can't doubt it. This time, Baccarati hasn't taken any chances. He wants us to be on hand when he blows up our ship. Maybe something on the floor we can use as a weapon when we open his door. Yeah, we'd do better if we crawl. Bet they'll have six men to keep us covered. I think this Murdoch here has a lot of nerve. I'll play that for yes, Nerve? Good aim. Open your mind to me. Happy to do here, Captain. Sounded like somebody talking. Open your mind. The voice, all right. I can't tell what direction it's coming from. There's a strange sound, too. Hmm. Is the dark playing tricks on my eyes? Or is there a glow at one end of the room? It's a golden mist. Listen to me, men from another planet. Listen to me. I am Ortho. Is that voice talking to us? Yes. I am communicating with you. I am Ortho, a lumen. I can rock it. Did you hear that, sir? It says he's a lumen. Oh, Baccarati playing a trick. Maybe. Ortho, do you hear me? No, but I sense your thoughts. You do not actually hear me. I project my thoughts into your mind. Yeah, it's Baccarati, all right. He's ordered one of his men to try to drive us nuts. I am not Baccarati. That name is charged with evil. He is trying to destroy you. You can say that ex- I mean, you can think that again. Where are you, Ortho? And what are you? I am a thousand miles away in the golden valley of this planet you call X. As I told you, I am a Lumen, an ancient race that for hundreds of centuries has lived here in peace. Well, look at that misty light. It looks like a face. A human face. I am trying to make myself real to you. I am projecting my thoughts an image of my features. Hmm. Either Baccarati's pulling something or... Hmm. Hey, this is like a brain again. Uh, only a uh, long distance. Think of it like that if you like. But we humans require no mechanical or electronic aid to project our thoughts to each other. In fact, we have few mechanical devices of any kind. No spaceship, no spaceophone. Why are you contacting us? For about three years, we humans have been aware of the growing force of evil on this planet. It seems to center in the region where you are now. Mm, three years. That's about how long Baccarati's been building up this empire. Quite heavy. Go on, our phone. We have tried to contact with our mind, some individual mind in that area, so we could learn the cause for this evil. Until now, we have met with failure. You see, evil minds cannot be attuned with ours. You, however, have a strong sense of justice and a dislike of cruelty, violence, and greed. Wait, Otto. There have been scores of people here who feel the same way. They've all been prisoners of Baccarati the way we are now. Fear sometimes makes it hard to establish contact. Perhaps you are less afraid. He came here to capture Baccarati and to liberate the people he's holding captive. He's a menace to our entire solar system, as well as to you, Lumen. I hope you have some means of defense. Not as yet. It may take generations to develop our minds in the direction necessary to combat spaceships and explosives. You won't have the time. If Baccarati ever finds you, he'll try to enslave you. If he can't do that, he'll destroy you. I have sent this dreadful thing. I hope you can help us. Great. We were hoping you could help us. If we can help each other. Ortho, could you project the thought image so anybody can see it? If I can picture the surroundings. Does the image always glow like a bright mist? Only in the dark. If your prison were lighted, you would see me as I am. A solid, flesh and blood being. Could you project an image of me so that someone else could see it? If you concentrate on how you look, how you are dressed, and on the exact place you want your image to appear. Suppose somebody touches the image. It would be like touching empty air. Ortho, let's try it. 
I'm going to concentrate on a certain corridor in this town. Right, right. I tell you, Your Highness, I saw him. Commander Corey standing in the corridor in front of the room we locked him in. That's impossible. He couldn't have escaped from that room. Unless one of the guards. Come on, let's look. Be careful, Simon. He may be right around the corner. Have your best gun ready. There he is. I told you. He's standing right in front of the door. Grinning at us. I'll finish you this time, Corey. <laughs> He's gone. Disappeared. He must have got back into the room just as you can. He blew a hole in the door. He must at least be injured. Come on. Look, Your Highness. The door is still bolted on the outside. Get out of the way. I'm going to see for myself. There you are. Both of you. It's time I want to miss. Corey, I'm going to spare you the tragic sight of seeing your ship destroyed. They're almost to planet X. After I finish you, I'm going back up to the tower room and blast your ship out of the sky. One by one. Got anything to say, Corey? No? Very well, then. Bad shooting, Baccarati. That takes care of Malingro. All right, Baccarati, drop that gun. Get the gun, hat. Yes, sir. I shot you. I know I shot you. You were standing on the opposite side of the room. Better have your eyes examined. When you come through... Come on, Hap. Let's get up to the tower room before those two characters revive. We've got to stop them from firing on our ships. Quickly, Buzz and Happy rush to the stairway leading to the tower room. Get away from those controls, Murdoch. Of course. Cover him, Hap. What have you done to his hymen? Just this. Hey, Commander, look at the musical. Here they come. Our help, ships. Me, help me smash these controls. We can't let them be shot down now. If I could just find something to hit with. Hey, this Injurium statue of Baccarati. Uh, just a thing. It's pretty heavy. We can both use it like a battering ram. Yes, sir. Head first. <coughs> that doesn't. Oh, I'm glad Baccarati's image was more solid than ours. Somebody's coming up the stairs. I'll take a chance on the elevator. I hope it's at this floor. It is. Get in. Get down before anyone alerts the guards at the east gate. the elevator dropped to the first floor of the giant castle. Then, with blast guns drawn, Buzz and Happy walked boldly toward the great open doors of the east wing. They're nearly at the drawbridge before the gate guard is aware that the two men who have sauntered out are space patrolmen. Oh! Head to the atmosphere ship, the one we came in. Yes, sir. I think I'd better slow that guard down that's chasing us. Did you stop him? I blasted a hole in front of him. He fell in. We can only make the ship before he alerts the whole field. Into the ship. If we can get the ship airborne. The hatch is secured, sir. That guard out there has a blast gun. We may be in for a rough time. Stand by to blast off. Standing by, sir. <laughs> 